both hands and you head for the lab door, only to find someone already standing in your way? Well, I can't wait to hear the explanation for this one! Because you failed! You refused to let Kenna die! When you disobeyed me to go into the spirit world, you probably wasted your time with foolish fantasies! And then you had the imprudence to suggest that I am wrong? Yeah. This channel is not intended for children. Please monitor what your kids watch online. Hello, mis amores. This is Kirby Marie here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to some more Crown in the Flame 2. Before we begin, as usual, would appreciate if you guys would subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified by the latest videos. Also, drop me the like button, it helps out a lot. And leave your comments and your thoughts on this video or anything in general. Um, so last episode where we left off, uh, in Kenna's perspective side, uh, she and Dom, well, not she and Dom, she, Raiden, and Annalise were at the ball, uh, they discover what, uh, they were doing in the fighting pit, uh, Kenna tried to save Anton, but unfortunately we couldn't do anything for him, but he still managed to save us, but we created a quite a big ass distraction, so much that Raiden was able to steal, uh, Queen princess Zenobia's necklace then um you know helen uh, we encounter with helen but helen uh we finally convince her uh to be the good person and to join us and she actually joins our army which is surprising um because she felt guilty for killing gabriel in particular uh then obviously we talked to adair we realized that she just wanted to free some of her people whatsoever um, but we, we, you know, we, she's still going to help us. She joined our army as well. And then in Dom's perspective side, uh, we are still like meditating and we got a phoenix because we had an encounter with our old bird from the first game. And now we have a phoenix with us. And then now we're with Anu trying to pass the final test, but Dom keeps being a dumbass and thinking that Kenna's in danger when he clearly knows that Kenna is in Liko's, <laughs> um, you know, trying to uh, bring more allies in that sense. Anyways, that's about it, what's going on right now. And hope you guys enjoy this video. And without further ado, let's just jump right in. Yes! Okay, chapter 11, the Naraki's Handmaiden. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Uh, Adair says that Val has to dress up as a handmaiden in order to be up and close and personal with Zenobia and learn more about her, I guess, and Hex. And so, because Kenna can't do it because she's too far recognizable, then Val has to do it. This is crazy. Alright, uh, can Val survive being handmaiden to Zenobia, the most demanding, rootless, and unpredictable member of the Navraki's family? Only one way to find out. <laughs> now playing as Val, at your camp just outside Lico, several of your companions listen in as Ada prepares you for your mission. Do you really think anyone's going to believe that I'm some prissy lady's maid? You'll have to do some convincing, but we can get you to at least look the part. I've obtained a handmade dress for you that matches the kind worn in the castle. Other hand to your cloth wrap package, you open it to reveal a gleaming red gown. Val is going to wear that? Uh -huh. It's gorgeous! You aren't seriously expecting me to put that on? <laughs> <laughs> oh my dear Valentina, I expect you'll pull it off nicely. Hells, Raiden, you told her my name? Uh, thanks, Raiden. Raiden, spell another secret and it'll be the last thing you do. <laughs> Never again, I swear it. Don't be too hard on him. It was in service of the mission. Val is hardly a fitting name for a lady's maid. You will go by your full name. Oh so Nobody will take you more seriously that way. Now, come on, get in your disguise. Oh, can I help? I can do her hair. What's wrong with my hair? <laughs> Oh, sweetie, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> but I promise, when we're done, you won't even recognize yourself. Great, I guess I don't have a choice, do I? Nope, Valentina, it's time to get you in your disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Val, you don't even look like Val anymore. I'm so glad I lived long enough to see this happen. You look beautiful! You should dress like this every day! Uh -huh. Just so you know, I'm not happy about this. 
now you're looked upon. But you must learn to cover your story. Here are your letters of recommendations and identifications. Oh boy, rating. Can someone just tell me what I need to do? Whitlock takes the documents from Adam and flips it through them. Let's see, your handmaiden from- I should probably take pictures of this. <laughs> Bruh. A handmaiden from Fidora, you had 11 years of experience. Your lady lost her fortune and could no longer afford your service. Okay. <laughs> 11 years? You could have made, have made it a couple of weeks? My dear, Zenobia Nevrakis is the princess of Lycos. To get by this placement, you need to be an expert, and so you are one. If you have information for us, hang this yellow ribbon outside Zenobia's window. We'll send someone to meet you at the east gate at sundown. If you're in danger, hang this red ribbon and we'll come sooner. Any last words before we send you off, Val? Yeah. Uh, you guys all owe me big time for this. Whitlock's already started composing a ballad in your honor. With flowing hair and gilding gown, so left Valentina the most fear, the most revered, meaner than a hyena. LOL! That's actually not bad. <laughs> Inventing is one of my many talents. Seriously, be careful, Val. Lycos is dangerous, and you're going straight into Zenobia's den. Yikes. Don't worry, I can take care of myself, even dressed like this. Just come back in one piece, okay? Is that an order? Yes. Then I'll be back before you know it. Tutorial, some choices increases Val, cutting score, okay. Later, after a nerve-wracking journey to the heart of Lycos, a soldier escorts you to the bed bedchamber of Zenobia Nerakis, you take a deep breath. Okay, bro, you got- you can do this. All you have to do is talk like Annalise and giggle and flip your hair around a lot. <laughs> do everything counter to all your instincts. <laughs> Here you are. Good luck. Believe me, with Princess Zenobia, you'll need all the luck you can get. Yikes. Oh, yeah? The soldier ca soldier cocks his head, eyeing you suspiciously. I meant, uh, oh, is that so? Please tell me more. You sound like you know so much about this place. <laughs> well, I probably shouldn't say anything, but you seem nice enough. Bruma says Zenobia had her last handmaid and be heated just because the woman pricked her hair with a pin. God! Suddenly, the door is thrown open and Princess Zenobia and Raki strides into the room. Oh, there you are! You must be my new handmaiden! The soldier hands your documents to Zenobia and, bowing, leaves the room. Zenobia lazily flips through the papers. These papers look strange. Where are you from? Fidoria, Fidoria. Oh yes, Fidoria. They do have the strangest ways of doing things there. Our ways are unique, yes. Hmm. So if you had 11 years of experience, that's quite a long time. Why aren't you working for your previous lady anymore? What happened to her? She, the lady lost her fortune. I love because the lady lost her fortune. I do love a good story of someone's ruin. Go on. Yes, tell me more. I want all the ju ju juicy details. I'm stored for gossip. Well, my lady lost her fortune because... If <laughs> you no, know, she poured all her money into... Uh, I'll stop you there, Valentina, because I'm already bored. Sorry, princess. Enough talk. You may begin undressing me. I want to change before dinner. Zenobia holds out her hand, which gleams with jewel rings and twinkling bracelets. This is worth a small fortune. You reach out and begin taking the rings off Zenobia's hands. Gotta stay focused. Even though it kills you inside, you refrain from stealing anything. Instead, you place each item in a painted jewelry box. There, that's the last one. Zenobia selects a few new items from her wardrobe and then assesses her gown. Valentina, fetch me a bustier. I want to look my best tonight. You look over where Zenobia gestures and see a pile of frilly things with no discernible purpose strewn over her bed. Ah. Uh, okay, I think. Here's the bust. I went to look it on the internet. Hurry up! I don't want to, this to take all day. As you lace the bust your abs, Zenobia sucks in her breath. I've never had a handmaid so slow at lacing up bust ears. Uh, uh, my last lady didn't use a bust ear. This isn't my speciality. What are you any good at, exactly? 
I was Rion at my own skill at... Uh, God, these fucking decisions! I don't know what to say! Making soup? Soup? I have scores of kitchen girls who can make soup. Did you really make soup as a lady's maid? I'm beginning to suspect that you're no more than a trump and kitchen wench looking to improve her station. No, my last lady just loves soup. Just here, banging on the door, you quickly open it and find the soldier there. Ugh, doesn't Helen handle all, uh, all of you so I don't have to? Princess Helen has left the castle. Liar! She never disobeyed me! We've confirmed it. She was spotted leaving the city. It seems she's deserted us, and I'm afraid she's taken a hundred of our soldiers with her. Why that miserable two-faced lying wretch? I'll force her into my fighting pit for this! No, no. First, I'll give her to Hex. Then I'll throw what's left of her into the pit. Then I'll... Wait, what are you still standing here for? I'm awaiting your commands. Uh? My commands? In Helen's absence, who will command the army if not you? I, I mean, of course I'll command the army. Anyway, isn't it obvious what you need to go? What you need to do? Go find her! Yes, at once, princess. But how many soldiers should we send? And should we station a guardhouse around the castle? Fine, look, I'm going to have to do everything myself around here. So Nabia stumbles up with the guard who hastens to keep pace with her. Oh, well, well, they're really falling apart without Helen. Kenner's going to want to hear about this. And with the guards all out looking for Helen, this is the perfect chance for me to do a little snooping. Perfect! After putting the yellow ribbon in Zenobia's window to signal the others, you sneak through the palace looking for Hex's lab. You wander through the empty halls, listening at doors and peering through keyholes until... Aha! I see weird machines and tubes. This must be the place. You try the door, but find it locked. Halls, why is nothing ever easy? I'll have to... try to pick the lock. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Pulling a hairpin from your brown curls as you slide it into the lock, a few minutes of careful fiddling later, the door swings open. I should always wear these hairpin, hairpin things. Inside Hex's lab, sinister machines emit eerie lights looming over you from every inside. Whoa, creepy, what is all this stuff? Against the back wall, a tall bookshelf lined with tiny glass bottles grabs your attention. The bottles are filled with strange multicolored liquids. Shiny. Wonder what are these for? Might be worth something. You pick up a bottle full of pale bluish liquid. I'll put it back. Let's not open shit right now. No thanks. Better not. Bro. Gingerly, you put the bottle back on the shelf. I bet half of the things in here will boil my skin or turn me into a frog or something. <coughs> a drawing desk near the stairs catches your eye. You walk up to examining the detailed diagrams laid out on large pieces of paper. This looks promising. Gathering up the papers, you spot another sheet of plans lying on a work table. Aha, now this has super weapon written all over it. Wow, literally. You grab the edge of the paper, sending a delicate metal contraption toppling off the table. I should catch it! You hand snap out, catching the contraption just before it hits the ground. Phew, that was too close. You pick up the weapons plans from the table and put the objects back in its place. Probably time to get out of here. A sudden noise makes you jump and you nearly drop your stack of papers. What in the... You whirl around, searching for the source of the noise, you hear it again. A faint burbling coming from a large tank in the corner. Moving close to the tank, something small and purple suddenly swims into view. <laughs> oh, it's a cute octopus! Who oh, else? I'm sorry, little guy. Please don't be scared. You notice a piece of paper stuck to the base of the tank covering neat, narrow writing. Kraken Juvenile, capture in shallows of wolf's mouth. Oh, a Kraken. Poor thing, but Hex has some weird experiments planned for you. Rescue the baby Kraken? Let's rescue the baby Kraken. Come here a minute, I'll get you out. Setting the papers down, you grab an empty jar gla glass jar from a shelf. You then climb up the stairs and pry open the top of the tank. You reach down inside the tank, straining. You manage to only scoop some water into the jar, then the tiny creature just out of reach. Hang in there, little guy. The baby kraken grabs onto your arm with several tiny tentacles and pulls itself out of the water. Whoa! He happily drops himself into the jar. Cute little octopus! Looks like I'm not the only one eager to get out of this place. Alright, now it's time to really go. You roll up the stack of papers and tuck them under your arm, crowding the kraken's jar into both hands and you head th for the lab door, only to find someone already standing in your way! <laughs> 
Well, I can't wait to hear the explanation for this one! God damn it! Okay, chapter 12, The Storming of Legos. Val's undercover mission takes a dangerous turn and Dom struggles to pass his final test in the spirit world. Sisonobia has just caught you in Hex Lab. She stands between you and the door glaring icily. Imagine my surprise when after dealing with incompetent guards, I find my handmaiden snooping around in my scientist's laboratory! You set Hex's paper and the Kraken's jar down a table, raising your hand in a calming gesture. Look, there is definitely a good explanation for all of this. Taking a deep breath, you find yourself speaking in an even deferential voice. I'm terribly sorry, mistress. You've been gone barely a moment when Lady Hex came storming to your rooms, demanding my assistance. Hex wanted your help? With what? Cleaning, mistress? She hasn't let any of the maids in here for weeks. I think the clutter was finally too much for her. She bade my dispose of all the loot papers and cleaned the tables. <laughs> And, and what are we doing with that? I am to clean the creature's tank as well, mistress. I don't believe it. You're my handmaiden, aren't you? Hex can't just steal you away to do petty tasks when you're supposed to be serving me. Uh? You're absolutely right, your majesty. Obviously. Come along. I'm going to give Hex a piece of my mind. We can do... I mean, there's no need to, mistress. There's absolutely a need. I can't have Hex snatching up servants whenever she pleases. Next, she'll be taking the kitchen staff as tech subjects. Zenobia turns her back on you, heading for the door. I've been too lenient with that woman. I'm going to remind her who rules in this. You move in close behind Zenobia and lock your arm around her neck, cutting up the blow of her brain. Zenobia <laughs> uh, uh! struggles, but your grip remains firm. A few seconds later, she slumps in your arms. Well, that could have gone worse. You're ho you hoist the unconscious princess over your shoulder. While carefully balancing Zenobia's limp form, you gather up Hex's plants, tuck them on your arm, and then scoop up the Kraken's jar in your free hand. Uh, cute. Shut up, you! I I'm improvising! You head to for the door. Consider this my ladder of resignation. <laughs> Having seen Val signal in the window of Nico's tower, you hide in the shadows near a small gate in the castle wall. Sundown was nearly two hours ago. I don't know why I even bothered to come along. You're not worried about Val? What if she signaled because she's in trouble? We need to trust that Val can handle herself. Val is one of the most capable people I know. She'll be here. I know it. <coughs> Agreed. I'm sure there's no cause for alarm. Most likely she simply come across information that she felt we need to know immediately. Maybe she's heard something about Hex's mysterious super weapons. Even a few pages of notes would be very... The gate suddenly bangs up and Val staggers out. Val, you're okay! Uh? By the great tree, is that Zenobia? Either that or a sack of really fancy potatoes. Someone gonna help me out or what? You help Val lower the unconscious princess to the ground. Val then shoves a thick roll of papers into Whitlock's hand. Yeah. Here you go, little man. Clean her all out the clean her out all of the papers I could find. Big one in the middle looks pretty good weapony. But Val holds up a jar containing a small sea creature. Don't do we okay there, Bubbles? Oh, she gave me Bubbles! And what is that? This is Bubbles and he's coming with us. Anyone have a problem with that? <coughs> no, not a word from me. <laughs> Val looks around at the stunned faces. What? Val! I knew you could do it. Well, obviously, I'm amazing. So thank you yes! for coming, everyone. Since we got the princess and since all the guards are scrambling in Helen's absence, I, I figure now's a good time for taking over like those things we've been talking about. You're right. We can't miss this opportunity. With luck, run back to the camp and tell Leon to get the army ready. We'll meet him at the front gates. Affirmative. Well, luck takes off running down the cobble street. Val follows close behind him, nearly tripping over her long skirt. Hold on! I'm not fighting in this stupid dress! Where's my armor? It happened to think that dress suits her. Pity we didn't hide Valentina's armor when we had the chance. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, that word Val can hear you. <laughs> A spy master never speaks without knowing exactly who is listening. <laughs> of course. A short time later, you stand at the head of your army before Liko's castle. Guards lined to the top of the castle's walls bowed at the ready. Well, this ought to be fun. Yeah. Been a while since I saw you, so happy, Leon. One of the guards comes forward to shout down at you. Well, who, look who finally showed up. It's the tiny queen. And she's brought her tiny army along. Too bad you need an army ten times bigger to break through these walls. That would be too bad if I intended to try to break, to try and break through your walls. 
but I don't need to. You're going to open the gates for me. <coughs> oh yeah, and why would we do that? Val? Val emerges from the ranks of the soldiers, pushing a shackled Zenobia ahead of her. <coughs> uh, hey! Touch me again and I'll have your hands cut off! Princess, you're really not in a position to be making threats. Val draws one of her daggers and holds the edge against Zenobia's throat. Zenobia, tell your soldiers to pull the gate or... Put your pretty your, hey, put your pretty head on the pike. Hmm, I'm not afraid of you. Really? Val pushes the blade in a bit and a thin line of blood trickling down Zenobia's neck. <laughs> Open the gate! Zenobia's soldiers rush to obey. The main gate swings open to admit your army. After your army has disarmed the enemy soldiers and taken the castle. I, I, Princess Zenobia and Nevakis to hereby surrender control of Legos to... Uh, Queen Kenna, race of Stormhold. Thank you, Zenobia. I accept. Cook your blessings, Princess. Sure, we took your castle, but at least you still got your head. No need to sound so disappointed, sis. Yes, we will all be thankful that this takeover was accomplished without bloodshed. Oh, there's going to be plenty of bloodshed when Father gets here. I don't doubt that, but at least Luther won't be getting any help from you in this battle. It doesn't matter, it won't be long before he kills you all, and I can't wait to see it. Now playing as dumb, surrounded in the spirit world by a second wave of Nevraki soldiers, you're determined to protect Kenna indefinitely. I won't let them harm you! A Nevraki soldier rushes at you and you burn him without even a second glance. Come on, Dom, stop this nonsense. Dom, you can't win! No, Kenna, I'm not giving up on you. You fool! Do you not see that there's no end? Fire coils around Anu's body like a blazing whirlwind. whirlwind. He slams his hand into the ground, sending the fire in the wave and destroys everything in his path. Whoa. The walls of the throne room blow apart. You find yourself standing on the stairy path once again, Anu and Kenna by your side. Why can't I get this? I need to finish my training now and get back to the real Kenna in time. You cannot rush your training. You're fast. The faster you try to go, the slower your progress. I'm failing you, aren't I? The only person you are failing is yourself. Oh, good. Each person's journey is different, just as all dragons are different. I can only tell you what I know. The mastery of the fire comes from letting go, from focusing solely on your training and giving up all else. And that starts here, in the spirit world, by giving up to the person you swore to protect. Suddenly, the Raki soldiers begin to materialize all around you. <laughs> really thought you could get away that easily? More and more soldiers form hundreds of thousands until you find yourself surrounded by an entire army. There are so many. Dumb. Will you finally let her die, Dominique? Will you let her go and give yourself to the fire? I will protect her forever. I know you think I should let her go and die. But I, I should just let her go and move on. And hells, the spirit world might be telling me that too. Your shadow self is a warning of what you could become. But you also said everyone's journey is different. Deep down, Anu. Letting go of Kenna just feels wrong. Everything in me is telling me to hold on to her. Maybe the spirit world is warning me of something else. Maybe instead, my shadow is what I will become if I do forget her. Maybe I'm not the one who's wrong. Maybe you are. What? I won't let her die, Anu. Not in here and not out there. You move to protect Kenna, but Anu reaches out and quickly touches your forehead. You wake up in the real world. What? Why did you stop me? Nearby, Blaze echoes your anger. Huh? Because you failed! You refused to let Kenna die! When you disobeyed me to go into the spirit world, you probably wasted your time with foolish fantasies. And then you had the imprudence to suggest that I am wrong? Yeah. I don't know if you're wrong. I just know that letting Kenna die can't be right. When I had nothing, when I was no one, she was there for me. She's been the person I, couldn't I could count on in my entire life. Maybe if I'd been raised here, it would have been different. I would have been different. More like you and say. But I was raised at Stormhold Castle, and Kenna Reese was my only friend and defender there. I know that I can't let go of that. Very well, perhaps you are right. You weren't raised in, with our ways. Your training may be impossible. Wow! Thank you for at least trying. I'll be going now. Kenna needs me. 
Say approaches, scrambling up the rock, she pulls you aside. Please tell me I didn't hear all of that correctly. It's idiotic to leave now. So I guess you're staying to finish your training? Yes, I'll come when I'm ready. And what about your grandfather? Do you think there's a chance he'd fight for our side? He doesn't seem very happy with you, Lowlander. And believe me, my grandfather's the kind of man you want on your side. This may be your only chance to make peace with him. Want, add, to, add Anu as, want to add Anu as an ally? See? You move to Anu, settling down beside him. You take a deep breath, speaking from the heart. Anu, I've been brash and disobedient. And a willful and stubborn. Not sure we need to keep listing things. <laughs> yes, all those. I've been obsessed with helping Kenna and blinded by my urgency. I should have been more respectful. I'm sorry. I know it may be too late. There is no such thing as too late when it comes to apologies. I accept. Thank you! And so, will you help the battle against Luther? Say and I will be there on the battlefield when the time is right. It'll be my honor to fight beside both of you. Thank you, Anu. And goodbye, Say. Good luck with your training. You're the one in need of luck, Lowlander. With that, you rush up down the mountains towards the far end of the realm. Hold on, Kenna. Please fight. Survive. I'll be there soon. Now playing as Kenna, with Legos now under your control, you return to your coastal command tent, where you make your final stand. Whitlock is waiting for you. You look, uh, you look grim. What's wrong? We took the castle, but Hex somehow managed to escape without anyone spotting her. I think I know how. Whitlock spreads one of Hex's plans outside the table. You trace the complex, unfamiliar shapes with your finger. What is this? A ship suspended beneath a container of heated gas and propelled by a pair of engines. You mean this is a, a ship? That can fly? I... It's how she was able to destroy the foundry. We never thought to prepare for an attack from above. I can't figure out how she's able to heat the gas and power the engines. It take a massive amount of energy. Where would she get that much energy? What if she's using Captic Fire magic users? I told you she have a Captic Fire user at the ball. She could easily have more under her control. That that would work. She's already proven that she can harness their magic. Remember the cannon at Stormhold? How could I forget? You're the mechanical genius, Wicklock. Can you see any ways to counter these flying ships? Not yet. Piercing the gas canisters would bring them down, but their bellies are heavily armored. They're vulnerable from above, but that's pretty much useless to us. Yikes. You shake one of Whitlock's hands and you're squeezing gently. You'll find a way, Whitlock. You always do. Thank you, Kenna. I won't let you down, I promise. The next day, you and your allies watch as your fleet sails into the wolf's mouth in preparation for battle. A glorious sight. It's been a long time since the army of the Stormhold took the sea. It's, it is beautiful. I just still hope it will be enough. We brought more than just pretty boats, remember? The people of all real are ready to fight for you. Kali is just excited to show off all those special fighting moves we've been working on. Like you're not? Come on, they're amazing! I must say, I'm not used to opposing the Naraki's rule so publicly. But I like you, Kenaris. You have my allegiance as well, a fitty best of my assassins. Much appreciated. Thorngate stands with you as well. Our soldiers are preparing to march as we speak. We can provide a force of 1,000 strong, except... Except what, Rowan? If we lose the battle against Luther, then there will be no one left to defend Thorngate. But if half of the army remains behind, then they can act as a second line of defense. Goodness, the battle hasn't even begun and you're already planning for failure? What do you know of battle tactics, Steve? I know that assuming you're going to fail is a good way to make that assumption come true. 500 troops will not be enough to defend Thorngate against Luther, but combined with our existing army, they could make the difference between victory and defeat. Rowan turns to look at you. And what says Queen Kenna? I, I'm always in favor for, Thor for Rowan. Let half of the Thorngate's army stay behind. I believe that we will win this battle, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't prepare for other outcomes. If the worst happens, I'll rest easier knowing that Thorngate will be able to defend itself. As I will. Thank you, Queen Kenna. I will summon our 500 finest troops. Thank you, Rowan. We might just be ready for Luther, especially if Helen fulfills her promise to bring more soldiers. As Rowan leaves to send her message, you hear armor boots hurrying down the docks. 
Turning, you see Jackson and Severin jogging towards you. Quinkana, we came! As fast as we could! Huh, as fast as he could for, uh, for me on this little stroll. Thank God you're back. Did you find Dom? We did. He, he said he wasn't ready to come back. Uh, oh, I see. Did he say... I mean, was there anything else? Said he'd be trying to there, be there soon. Hope he can run faster than this twig, man. I suppose that's something. Thank you both. Jackson and Severin bound and head back into the camp. And Elise puts an arm around your shoulders. Oh, Kenna, Dom will make it here in time. I know he will. I hope so. Because the time for battle is here, whether he makes it or not. <coughs> Alright then, as much as I would like to continue this episode, I am definitely going to be ending it here. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you really did enjoy it, drop me the like button. It helps out a lot. If you're not subscribed to the channel, would appreciate it if you do. Also leave your comments and your thoughts on this video or anything in general. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Love you, appreciate you, and we'll see you on the next one.